To remove any grease, I use blue paper towels. The Scott ones work really well for me. I use Hobbies number nine. Throw a good bit on there. And then I'll just go ahead and completely wipe down the barrel. The Hoppies does a good job of taking off any grease. And then we'll go ahead and start running our patches. I like to use plastic picks when going through the frame and slide. Just to get into the little you know, nooks and crannies, all of the, uh, the little channels and everything, get behind the, the extractor. Um, they help out a lot. I try to stay away from anything that's steel. Even the brushes for the barrel, I generally use polymer brushes uh, or no brushes at all. Uh, the wipeout accelerant, uh, sorry, accelerator and patch out work pretty well to remove most of the carbon fouling that I end up with. So, we'll just go ahead and go through some of this stuff. The first step is to use the accelerator. And then the second step is to use patch out. And these two compounds together uh, form a weird chemical reaction that seems to break down the carbon uh, inside the barrel pretty well. So we'll just go ahead and let that sit for a little while. And then we'll work on cleaning up our slide and our frame. Feel free to fast forward through this because I know this isn't the most glamorous part of uh, firearm ownership. So, again, there's grease inside, so I'll use the hop, Hoppies number nine. A nice soaked patch. So, there's a little bit of a history to, uh, there's actually a, quite a convoluted history to the, the name Automag started in the mid 60s with a gun store owner in Pasadena, California by the name of Harry Sanford, who along with one of his co-workers, a gunsmith by the name of Max Guerra, designed and built the prototype for what would eventually become the Automag 180. And it was chambered in a proprietary cartridge called the 44 AMP, which stood for Automag Pistol. It was basically a rimless 44 Magnum that they designed. They took a 308 casing, cut it down to about 44 Magnum length, and then reamed the brass to accept a 44 caliber projectile. Unfortunately, there was uh, a lot of animosity between Max Guerra, uh, some other employees and investors and everything uh, that actually caused him to leave the Automag Corporation prior to the pistols going into production in 1971. More bad management <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> business decisions were made uh, which caused the Automag Corporation to go into bankruptcy less than a year and a half later. And it ended up being bought and sold multiple times through uh, several different companies and uh, Harry Sanford's son actually sold the rights to another company back in 2015, I believe, uh, to have the original Automag uh, reintroduced to the public. So, Harry Sanford went on to work with a couple of other companies, including AMT, which stands for Arcadia Machine and Tool and he got the idea to start doing another Automag uh, line. And 
the original was actually two words, and then the new ones under A and T were actually just one word, just the auto mag. And they started with the Automag 2 in 22 Magnum, the Automag 3 in 30 Carbine, as well as 9mm Winchester Magnum, the Automag 4 in 45 Winchester Magnum and 10mm Magnum, and then the Automag 5 in 50 AE. So, Harry Sanford ended up uh, working with AMT for a few years. That company ended up getting bought out by another company, and uh, Harry Sanford passed away in 1996, I believe. His son continued selling the original uh, Automag parts online, and then he sold the rights to uh, another company, I think in South Carolina, like I said, to uh, reintroduce the original Automag 180 series pistols. Some of you might be surprised at the amount of grease that I actually put back onto this firearm, but it is not a defensive firearm. It is a plinker. Um, I don't even really have plans to use it hunting, but uh, I haven't had any issues with it uh, the way that it's lubricated. Doesn't look too bad. Another interesting note on this pistol is the safety design. It's a little different than most pistols. Uh, just rotate it down, safety comes up, and it just blocks the firing pin. It doesn't actually disengage the trigger or hammer from functioning. Um, so. Just another feature of this interesting firearm. That's clean. And now we'll go back to our barrel. discoloration of any copper uh, from the wipeout chemicals but it does come out pretty clean so we'll go ahead and wipe off our rod and the 
50 AE is a little bit different, again, from the uh, 22 Magnum, the Automatic 2, 3, and 4, uh, as they don't have the ported barrels uh, or the slide. So, another difference. Go ahead and run a couple of dry patches. and we have a clean patch so now that it's completely dry I don't know if you can <laughs> I'm sure you won't be able to see down the barrel but uh, it's pretty clean so we'll go ahead and run a patch and you're welcome to use, you know, your favorite uh, lubricant. I use CLP a lot for firearms that stay in storage for an extended period of time. Uh, just because it has, seems to have a higher uh, rust preventative compound to it. So we'll go ahead and push that through. Again, it doesn't, uh, doesn't appear that there's too much residual grime on there so we'll get one more patch and load it up with a bunch of CLP happy with that. Goes inside. Any excess oil off. And like I said, you should use a lubricant that's designed for stainless steel. And that's on all the auto mag pistols. Go ahead and put a decent amount on the fingers. And then go over the whole barrel with it. A nice even coat. Uh, try not to build it up in any one particular spot too much. There are a couple of lockup surfaces on this barrel that I generally like to make sure that I definitely at least get those that looks pretty good and I'll take any excess and I'll just go ahead and wipe down the inside of the slide and try to get into the channels just a, a little bit like I said any contact points um, I would try to get lubricate I'll go ahead and put it on the frame. And I'm actually using my fingernail to press some of the grease down inside the rail here.
And I'm not too concerned with any excess that gets around it because we're going to wipe the pistol off after we put it back together anyway. Well, that looks pretty good.